the most popular handgun of the 20th century, the Smith & Wesson Model 10. Let's check it out. The Smith & Wesson Model 10 is the most popular handgun in the 20th century. Um, starting out in 1899 as the Smith & Wesson 38 MMP for military and police. <laughs> and you wonder where Smith & Wesson got that MMP. That has been a long-standing tradition with Smith & Wesson. Uh, this served in World War I, World War II, was changed then in 1957 to the Model 10, served in Vietnam, Korea. It served in a lot of other actions all over the world all the way up through Desert Storm and beyond. In fact, this handgun was used by U.S. military forces up until the 90s when it was replaced with the Beretta M9. Now, this wasn't necessarily a combat firearm in combat areas. Of course, the 1911 served on the battlefield with U.S. troops and other troops. But the Smith & Wesson m and was with security forces, pilots, the U.S. military, and in 30 different countries around the world. This just happens to be a police trade-in from Europe and it came into classic firearms in a small lot, the Model 10-6 and the Model 10-8. Uh, this is the 10-8, has the bull barrel, nice heavy frame. This will shoot plus P loads, very strong firearms. And guys, while these surplus pistols come in at a great price, uh, once they dry up, they'll meet demand. And I want to thank Classic Firearms for sending this Model 10-8 for this test and evaluation. Now the nice deep bluing is mainly for police units. In World War II, these were known as the Victory model, and they were a sandblasted parkerized finish uh, with a small lanyard loop at the bottom, and you can still find those around. Incrementally, there were changes made to the Model 10 all the way up from the beginning all the way till now. In fact, the Model 10-6, there are improvements with the 10-8, uh, mainly around the, the gas ring and the cylinder area. Uh, but still, those are still excellent firearms. Uh, this one is just in that cold blue steel. I mean, it is solid, and we'll take a look at some of the trigger action, how smooth it is. But another thing about the Model 10 was that it was in hundreds of different movies. This is just one of those iconic pieces that when somebody pulls out a revolver, chances are it's a Model 10. Now, not quite as sexy as the 1911, definitely a major part of history in the 20th century. I mean, the Model 10 was just known for being very reliable, strong, and uh, very accurate. And, of course, the Smith & Wesson quality during those days was over the top. I mean, everything is hand-fitted. It's just a really nice, smooth action. Uh, and you can see that cylinder just spin. I mean, that thing just spins. And we can see also that it's unloaded. But uh, just one of those old school type revolvers that were carried a lot and shot little. And that's one of the things about these old police trade-ins. Now it has the square butt and has the walnut grips. Uh, and of course these are actually in pretty decent shape. But the great thing about these, you can actually get aftermarket grips pretty easily. Uh, the bluing is that nice blue, deep blue color. And uh, has almost a mirror finish to it. Uh, the sights are low profile. I mean, this is a combat firearm. So they're actually built into a dovetail or groove right here. And then you have this front sight that's just a ramp. And it is serrated. And then you have a matte finish on top to keep glare down. Then you can see that bluing come through. Now this is the heavy barrel, uh, which is the most popular of the Model 10s. Uh, the early models did have more of a thin profile barrel. 
uh, all the victory models and this kind of came in afterwards now there were a number of commercial model 10s available and the uh, smith and wesson 38 military and police uh, but this was again in 38 special and that really helps with the felt recoil i mean these guns are so soft to shoot and then the weight as well and we'll look at that in a minute four inch barrel uh, they did make it in a number of different barrel lengths uh, all the way from two inch all the way up to six inch have the push button cylinder release just pushes in it's nice and serrated so you've got a good feel for it and push it in very easily the trigger is actually serrated so your finger's not going to slip off and this nice hammer. Now one of the things about this hammer is the older style revolvers had a hammer that had a firing pin attached. As you can see it's pinned. Uh, but some of the modern ones they have the floating firing pin inside. And there were some upgraded features to make this a little bit safer. But this is definitely the old school style. Now this one does not have the pin barrel. I believe the model 10-6 has a pin barrel. And to tell what model you have right here inside the crane, it'll say model 10 8 or 6 or whatever model that is designated. And there were a number of different ones. Now, Smith & Wesson still produces the model 10, and uh, they're fairly expensive. Uh, and, of course, a lot of modern processes go into those, but it misses, to me, this really nice, fine bluing. Uh, you're just not seeing that as much on the modern firearms. Uh, it does carry six in the cylinder, and you can get speed loaders if you want to put them in. And then to eject the brass, just push out on the cylinder rod, and it pops it out. Um, now, one of the things about Classic Firearms that I noticed, and you can go to the Classic Firearms website and check it out, but they have a video showing all the different models and the, the conditions that these are in. A lot of them have a lot of wear around the grips, and some of the bluing's worn. I mean, this has some bluing, but this is really in pretty good shape. A few pitting marks right here. I believe there were some right in here. Very light, but uh, overall a great shooter, something to take out. And again, if you get one with grips that are a little bit rough, you can you can get Smith & Wesson grips actually on eBay or Amazon or you know aftermarket grips from VZ to whatever you want. Uh, there's a lot of different companies. And that's one of the things about the Model 10 is that it still has holsters, grips, you know, speed loaders, all the things. And of course, the ammunition choices are limitless. Um, you know, whether you go with just your standard ball ammunition like this, or you can go right up to full house, you know, plus P loads for self-defense. And this to me makes a great home defense firearm. One thing about a revolver is it's just simple. It's very, just pull the trigger and it fires. Uh, and then, you know, it just makes it a very nice dependable firearm. One of the reasons why that the soldiers during World War I especially preferred the revolver over a lot of your semi-automatics because they could jam. So the revolver was very trusted. These served with a lot of Commonwealth nations including uh, England and uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, but in different calibers. And a lot of those were brought back into the U.S. and rechambered for 38 Special. We're going to take the grips off and just to see what kind of action that it has in here. And I'm pretty sure it's a spring, just a leaf spring. And that's to bring back the hammer. And these grips have probably not been off in a long time. <laughs> and here we see just a leaf spring. I think on some of the more modern Smith & Wessons, they're going with a spring, actual regular spring that fits here. And it just brings it down. But the leaf spring definitely was something that was used for a, many, many years. And so there's just a lot of, of course, we can clean that up. But the grips on the inside, you can see they're very nice. And it has the Smith & Wesson medallion. And this is the three screw, as you can see right here. And it just keeps this cover plate on. We're not going to take it off. And guys, one of the things about these type of firearms, these police trade-ins, is they come into the country at a very reasonable price. Uh, actually, about half the price you'd pay for a new one. And yet, a lot of the features, I mean, you can see the heat treating that goes into the hammer. I mean, these are forged pieces. The trigger has the bluing. You can see the different case color hardening. Uh, and so, you know, it definitely has a lot of old school appeal. And this to me is something that, you know, you can really take out to the range and enjoy. You don't have to worry about having something that's super collectible. And yet these will go up in value as the supply drops off, which it will. Now, this was also made in a stainless steel version, and it's the Model 66. And one thing that a lot of people are going to like about these old school revolvers is they don't have the trigger locks. <laughs> and a lot of people really despise that, that Smith & Wesson added that. But that has a lot to do with legality 
And so, you know, it is what it is. The barrel is also crowned. Now, you can see all that heavy barrel. I mean, it is, it is a well-balanced firearm. Now, I'm going to show you the trigger action. Uh, the first is, of course, double action. And it's a heavy pull, but it's very smooth. You can hear that clicking of the cylinder turning. Nice, clean break. Uh, if you want to go with single action, <laughs> that is a beautiful single action trigger. I mean, it is crisp and there's no wall or take up after you hit that trigger. I mean, it just stops. Okay, we're going to check our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Check the double action trigger pull weight. 7 pounds, 15.3 ounces. 7 pounds, 2.1 ounces. Um, we've done this a number of times. It is around the 7.5 pound range. Single action. Two pounds, 10.8 ounces. Two pounds, 12.2 ounces. Now there are no trigger safeties on a revolver. And so when you pull that trigger, it's that nice heavy trigger pull. So that gives you the safety. But when you get to that single action, it's really more for more precision shots or for target. And so you're not going to have it in that real, you're not going to keep it in this position right here. It's usually going to stay down in the double action and it should be fired mainly in double action. And with that smooth pull, it's going to still allow for good accuracy. And we appreciate Fiocchi USA for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, this is just standard ball ammo. And uh, we've shot some jacketed hollow points in plus P. They do real well. We're just going to try out some of this. And we're getting ready to go. One of the things about a revolver to me is that it kind of slows things down. Uh, taking it out to the range, you've got that double action trigger pull. It's just really smooth. <laughs> that Smith & Wesson quality. And that's double action. Pull it to single action and it's a nice clean break. One of the big things about these old revolvers is that they were, each piece was milled, heat treated. I mean, it was hand fitted. And so it really has that really classic feel to it. Very smooth. Uh, even more so than a lot of the revolvers made today, or even the semi-automatics. There's just a lot of soul to taking out a revolver. Uh, you only have six shots, but those six shots can really count if you just make that shot placement right. And with 38 Special, the recoil is so mild. Uh, even with your hot self-defense loads, plus P loads, uh, it's a real joy to take this out to the range and shoot it. Uh, and then, of course, with the weight of the handgun, that definitely adds to it. The bull barrel, I love it. This is my preferred way and really what most people liked, especially after World War II. Uh, it seemed like Smith & Wesson really went to that bull barrel design. It gives the revolver a lot of balance. Now, one thing about this grip, you know, just that wood square butt grip, and it looks iconic, but yet is it comfortable? And I'll tell you, because it flares out at the bottom, you just have a nice solid grip on the revolver. And um, I'll tell you guys, again, if you don't have a, just a good old school revolver, I highly recommend them. They are some of my favorites to take out to the range. And they just have a lot of soul to them. Now, even in the day of semi-automatics and striker fire pistols, uh, Smith & Wesson still produces the Model 10 because it is just a very popular firearm. Uh, one thing about the Smith & Wessons, they run about $742, I think, is the manufacturer suggested retail. And so with these police trade-ins coming in, the price is really right. In fact, Classic is selling these for $299. And uh, that's a great price for an old school Smith & Wesson revolver that can just handle any kind of modern loads. And guys, I want to thank Classic Firearms for sending the Model 10-8 for this review. And uh, guys, if you're looking for a good old school revolver that still has all the modern features, uh, right now is the time to buy it. Because once the supplies run out, you're going to go right back to that Smith & Wesson price. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic.
Beep, 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 beep,